and more and more cars. More on our roads than last year. And there'll be more next year. And the year after that, more and more cars will be built and more cars will be bought. And every one of them will be entitled to room on our roads and highways. The thing is, will there always be room for one more car? Well, there isn't even enough room now. Today, many of our highways are already obsolete. What would happen on them during a national emergency? The entire population under panic conditions trying to escape. Death on the highways is one of America's greatest problems. Major factors in this mounting loss of life are the roads and highways themselves. They are not engineered for safety or for the number of cars now using them. President Eisenhower's militant call for a grand plan to provide a modern controlled access highway system for safe, efficient transcontinental travel led to the passage of the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956. He dramatically underscored the fact that our interstate road network is inadequate locally and obsolete nationally. The president has led the way to positive action. Public road engineers have long been making plans to meet the growing emergency of highway obsolescence. They have worked with scientific detachment to create the interstate highway system that we need today and must have in the future. In charge of this great program is Federal Highway Administrator Bertram D. Tallamy. The program involves the construction of 41,000 miles of expressway connecting every segment of the United States. In addition to that, it includes the construction of many hundreds of thousands of miles of state highways, of city arterial routes, and of secondary roads. We usually call those farm-to-market highways. There's no question but what completion of this wonderful highway construction program will affect everyone. From the national defense point of view, it's indispensable. The beneficial effects of this program are certain to be felt in every community in the entire United States. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Greater Hilldale Luncheon Club meets every Wednesday, and of course, everybody is there. Mr. Harper, who works at the bank. Mr. Gunderson, one of the community's most successful farmers. Mr. Huggins is a pretty important farmer, too. Emma Glock is the chairman of the Hilldale Historical and Civic Beautification Committee, and it's largely due to her that Hilldale is one of the prettiest and cleanest little towns in the state. Sally owns a neat little coffee shop, and Bill, who has a service station and garage, eats there, and so does Ben, who has a motel close by. Today, Mayor Willits is presiding. The other evening, my seven-year-old daughter, Gracie, asked me what I thought was going to be a very difficult question. So I began with the birds and the bees. <laughs> but she frowned and shook her head and said, I know all that old stuff, Daddy. What I want to know is, where do all the automobiles come from? <laughs> Perhaps Mr. Norton, our guest speaker, who is an engineer with the United States Bureau of Public Roads, can answer Gracie's question as he talks to us about the new national system of interstate and defense highways. Mr. Norton. Thank you, Mayor Willis. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think the most important question is not where the automobiles come from, but how they're going to get where they're trying to go. Let <laughs> <laughs> light off, please. In a typical state, our roads and highways resemble an accidental natural growth. The main stems, the branches, the twigs. In crossing this state from A to B, about 200 stops will have to be made. Some for stoplights, many to avoid other vehicles. Such a system, or rather lack of system, wastes time, wastes fuel, and is a big factor in our appalling accident rate. What is needed is one overall master plan for our roads and highways. In this plan, there will be no intersections. Access will be controlled. It will really unite all of our United States. 
it will be possible to drive from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean and from Canada to Mexico on safe, multi-lane, divided highways without a single stoplight or stop sign. You will travel swiftly, easily, and safely because safety for the traveling public is engineered right into the plan. This system of interstate and defense highways is for the traffic of the future. At the rate traffic is increasing, it is absolutely necessary or our towns and cities will be literally strangled in a few short years. Would you turn the lights on, please? It will benefit us tremendously economically. It's of vital importance to national and civil defense, and it'll make life easier and more enjoyable for all of us. Thank you. And so the pleasant, friendly life of Hilldale moves on, each week pretty much like the last just as it does in all the pleasant, friendly towns that are the backbone and sinews of America. Mr. Harper was born in this fine old house built by his father. Like all of us, he's glad to return to it at the end of a busy, tiring day. Grandma's proud of the Harper home and takes special pride in the old trees, especially those planted by her husband, who set one out for each of their children. Hi, darling. How'd things go? Oh, about the same as usual. Uh, sure was hot downtown today. Helen, you remember two or three weeks ago we had a highway official as speaker at the lunch club? Yes, yes, you told me about it. Freeways linking the whole country. Well, one of those freeways is coming here. Through Hilldale. How wonderful. Where will it go? They don't say. Almost everyone in Hilldale is concerned about the proposed freeway. Nobody knows anything beyond the fact that it will certainly bypass the town. They are afraid that without that traffic, Hilldale will become a ghost town. Mr. Snavely is Hilldale's specialist in dark suspicions. He is sure this freeway thing is just another boondoggle to waste the taxpayers' money. And the biggest local news is, of course, the coming of a freeway to Hilldale. As we understand it, the highway people have three alternate routes, but their locations have not yet been disclosed. There will be a meeting at the high school at 10 a.m. Saturday, at which time an engineer from the State Highway Department will enter. Hello, Mr. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gray. I'm the Deputy Chief Engineer of the State Highway Department. This is Mr. Anderson, Planning Engineer. Together we hope to be able to answer the questions that many of you will want to ask about the new freeway. As part of the overall plan for a chain of expressways crossing the country from east to west and north to south, one of the freeways serving our state will pass near Hilldale. My name is Simmons. I raise poultry. I don't see why this freeway can't go straight across the state instead of dipping down to us. The interstate system is designed to interconnect and serve the major cities, the military, and industrial areas of the United States. The location of the cities, which are the points of origin and destination in this part of the system, make it necessary to build the freeway near Hilldale. The national plan cannot be engineered unless the whole picture is taken into account. Uh, my name is Harper. I work in the bank. Uh, when a freeway is put through a community such as ours, what factors determine the exact route? I'm going to call on Mr. Anderson, our planning engineer, to answer that question because it comes under his department. Even before any field work is started, many months of preliminary planning and engineering have been done. The first step in actual location begins with a careful field survey, most of which is done from the air. Now, this special camera photographs the terrain under study in three dimensions. The stereoptic three-dimensional photographs are then interpreted and measured. 
This method greatly reduces time and costs. Surveys, which used to take 10 to 12 months, are now completed in two or three. Electronic brains are used with great savings. The measurements obtained from the 3D photographs are fed into the computer, which, with electronic speed and accuracy, calculates all of the necessary construction factors affecting highway location, and so determines where the road should be located. Thus, the costs of preliminary survey and calculation are greatly reduced. And we're able to evaluate many possible routes and select the best one. Actual savings of as much as 20% in the amount of dirt to be moved have resulted from these new engineering methods. Another example of the versatility of these new methods is demonstrated by this culvert. The drainage area it serves is mapped by aerial survey and the computer then calculates how much water there will be and how big the pipe should be to handle it. With these methods, the highway engineers make sure we get the most and the best roads for our money. As an example of the care and science used to select routes, soil is tested in all localities to determine its compaction qualities for fills and elevations. Other studies determine the aggregates to be used, such as slag for concrete and asphalt shoulders crushed limestone or rock. Their availability, cost, and adaptation to the proposed route all have a bearing on the selection of the route. Then too, studies are made to determine the least disturbance in right-of-way location, projected growth of the area, cost of securing right-of-way, buildings to be moved, traffic to be handled, location of entrances and exits, and a thousand and one other considerations. The factors that determine a route are given to us by the camera, calculator, the laboratory, and the scientists and engineers capable of making wise and impartial selections. My name is Williams. Now they tell me that you can only get on these freeways at certain places. Now why can't you get on wherever you want to? The reason we must limit access to the freeways is that we wouldn't have a freeway very long if we didn't. An old-fashioned highway without limited access can be entered at any point along the route by individuals. And of course, stoplights must be installed at intersections. Without planned access, business establishments soon spring up at the corners and extend along the highway. Parked cars take the right-hand lane. We no longer have a highway. It becomes the congested main street of a small town. With limited access, there's a frontage road which serves the business areas which cannot build up directly on the freeway and choke it to death as the main street of Hilldale is choked right now. My name is Bill Jordan. I have a service station on the highway just outside of town. Ben here owns an auto court, and Sally has a coffee shop in the same place. Well, we'd like to know what the freeway's gonna do to us. It looks to us like it'll drain a lot of people. It might be customers off the highway where we are. It looks like the money that the travelers now bring into town will stay on the new freeway, and we'll never even get a chance at it. Our experience indicates that that isn't true. For one thing, money that might be spent in Hilldale now goes on through town. Suppose a highway traveler does want to buy something. The chances are that they'll be out of town before they can find a place to stop. Then, too, most of the traffic on the main street of Hilldale is not there because it wants to be. Most of the travelers are simply trying to fight their way out of town. Once Hilldale is served by the freeway, the travelers who have no intention of stopping in town will go straight on thus relieving the town's traffic congestion. But travelers on the freeway are like everyone else. The time comes when they need something, and the freeway will be properly signed to let them know where they can find it. After all, every one of them will still need gas and oil. All of them will eat three times a day and sleep in a motel or hotel at night. Such a freeway traveler will turn into town to find what he wants. He'll spend money in Hilldale, because that's what he came there to do. 
Careful studies of existing freeways, such as the New York Thruway, the Houston Expressway, and expressways in California, New Jersey, and other places, indicate that in general, business in an area served by a freeway shows an overall increase, and property values show remarkable rises. It's because travelers can get into town, move around, find a place to park, and buy what they want. Also, the freeways have much greater traffic capacity, and they're pleasant to drive on. So there are just naturally more people for Hilldale to draw on. Kind of makes sense, all right. My name is Miller. How are all these people going to know where to turn off to get the things they need? Your state highway department will give you the information on the towns and cities ahead and the services they offer, clearly and boldly like this. Even on the darkest nights, we'll see these information signs as brightly as by day. Reflectorized signs leap into life thousands of feet ahead when caught by your lights and look exactly the same at night as by day. In conjunction with proper signing, highway lighting will show the way clearly and safely on and off the system. In addition, all hazardous locations will be clearly illuminated. On our present highways, one-third of the traffic is night traffic, yet it produces two-thirds of the fatal accidents. Good lighting will correct this situation. I'm Gunderson. I've got farmland that will be cut no matter where you go. And I am not going to stand for that. And how do I get on this here no-fangled road? Drive 10 to 15 miles? It'll be closer to four miles. Today you only have to travel about one mile to get on the present highway. But it's a pretty slow road. As part of this accelerated program, our farm-to-market roads will be developed as feeder roads to the interstate system. And once on the freeway, you will cut the time it takes you to reach your market by more than half. Your produce will certainly arrive at the market in a much shorter time. It will be fresher and should bring a better price. You will sell produce that might otherwise be lost, and you will be able to select the markets with the highest prices. Yeah, yeah, maybe this air freeway be pretty good thing, but not to cut my land. A fair price will be paid for any land taken, and damages will be paid for any property severed from the rest. And there's a possibility, oftentimes, of a trade. See, Ole, our land is side by side. They cut your north end and my south end. They pay us. Then I trade you my end for your end. Yeah. <laughs> they got to get up pretty early in the morning to fool Ole Gunderson. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gray, I am Emma Glock, the chairman of Hilldale's Beautification and Historical Committee. I've been studying these maps, and each proposed route will destroy some natural beauty or some historical treasure of this community. After all, don't these things have some cultural and social value? Man does not live by bread alone, Mr. Gray. I agree. I also believe that a cleanly designed and perfectly functional highway has a beauty of its own. Also, the expert landscaping of a freeway often becomes a distinct community asset. Whenever possible, in our bigger cities, rights of way are located in blighted or slum areas, which helps to clean them up. And we must never forget the safety of the freeways. We must do what we can to cut down the appalling accident rate today on our highways. We must protect our children who are beginning to drive. And the freeway accident rate is less than half the national average. Sometimes we do have to give up a cherished thing in the interest of progress and the greatest good to the greatest number. Well, what you've been saying makes sense to me. I think this new highway will be a good thing for Hilldale. 
Uh, can you tell us at this time exactly where it will go? Three routes have been surveyed, but the final decision will not be made until we study the record of this hearing. If you pick route A, it'll go smack right where my store is. Put it on B. No, sir. Route B would ruin me. All those young trees, my greenhouses, put it on route C. Wait a minute. Route C will take my drive-in theater, and that's a mighty big investment. Put it on Route A. Well, put it on B or C. A or C, but not B. What are you fellas talking about? Not C. Believe me, not C. You've got to put it gentlemen, on. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. The freeway must go someplace. Why? Why should you outsiders come in here and tell us we're going to have a freeway the way you plan it? Why can't we have our own engineer to check these things? Let him tell us if we need a freeway, and if so, where it should go. One of the purposes of this meeting is to ensure that equal consideration is given to local needs because an interstate highway is coming through the community. The state will gladly cooperate with your local planning engineer. All right, what happens to all this money us taxpayers dig up? Well, a lot of it goes right back to you property owners. The rest of it goes to the men who do the job, engineers, both in government and in consulting firms which design many of our bridges and other major structures. Those who manufacture the machinery. The equipment distributors, too, perform a vital service by furnishing and servicing the machinery. Then there are the suppliers of material, such as aggregate, cement, asphalt, tar, corrugated steel pipe, aluminum for lighting fixtures, bridge rails, and signs, and steel for massive bridges, guardrails, lighting standards, wire mesh, and other reinforcing. And last, but certainly not least, is the army of workmen employed by the highway contractors. How do we know we're getting our money's worth, and who gets these contracts? All the jobs are advertised publicly, and qualified contractors are invited to bid in accordance with our American system of free competitive enterprise. Anyone else, please? My daughter-in-law, Etta, well, she's married to John, and they live over in West Forks. The freeway's already been built over there. They think it's just wonderful, but I've been wondering about these great, big, dangerous machines. All the clatter and dust and confusion. How long are we going to have to put up with such goings-on? Well, those big machines are not really dangerous because they're handled by experienced men, trained to operate with safety, both for the workmen and for the public, under the skilled eyes of safety engineers. Of course, there's bound to be some inconvenience in a project of this size, but the work around Hilldale won't take nearly as long as you might think. Everything moves fast because the engineers and workmen are sure of themselves. Today, we move mountains out of the way instead of going around them. Coordination is modern and thorough. There's no waiting around. Our modern designs with long sight distances and gentle sweeping curves are made possible by our great earth moving machines. On the biggest jobs, we are actually able to move up to 30 tons of earth in a single carrier at 25 miles an hour. And modern paving machines unwind the ribbons of road before our eyes at an unbelievable rate. Land Goshen. <laughs> If there are no further questions, the hearing is closed. Thank you all for coming.
All I got to say is, it's a lucky thing for them I don't own any property where they're going to put that thing. You know, Stavely, I think it's kind of lucky for all of us that you don't. Yeah. Registered letter. Joe, turn the TV set off. Oh, turn it off. Well, what is it, John? It's from the highway commissioner. Highway commissioner? We have found it necessary in locating the new interstate and national defense highway in the Hilldale area to acquire your property for right-of-way and would like to arrange at your convenience a meeting with our appraisers and negotiators to establish a fair value and arrange the terms of the purchase. You mean the freeway is going to come through our place? That's what the letter says. They have no right to do this. This is the Hopper place. It always has been. And it always will be. I'm not going to have these highway people come in here and tear out our good trees and turn the house into rubble. No. These are my trees. And when those bulldozers come, they'll find me sitting right here in this chair. And if they're going to take the house and the trees, well, they'll take me too. Joe, run on and tell Grandma to come back in the house. The bulldozers won't be here for two or three months yet. Yes, Dad. I've been thinking a lot about what we'd do if this happened, and I believe there's only one answer. some people, like Mr. Snavely, who don't want progress. They're just against everything that's new and different, whether it's good or bad. But they never win. Now, we don't want to give up our home any more than anyone else wants to give up theirs. But anybody with any sense at all knows that this system of roads will be a good thing for his country and for all of us. It's something we really need. As a matter of fact, we've got to have it if we're going to move ahead in this country the way we always have. So it comes down to this. We all want the roads, but we want them on somebody else's place, not ours. We all want the benefits and the progress and the safety and the convenience, but we want them without having to disturb our own setup. Well, if we want all these things, the highway has to go someplace. Now, the routes are selected by experts who have nothing against us. They don't even know us. They just design the road to go where it'll do the most good for everybody and for the overall plan. Well, it happens that this road goes through our place. And I think we'd be pretty small-minded if we tried to fight it. I'm sure we'll be given a good price for our place and we can build a new house. And as far as I'm concerned, I just don't think that any family or business or individual has any right to hold up anything that'll be good for his whole community and for his country, too. Well, sir, before too long, the freeway was completed. And it all happened pretty much the way Mr. Gray had said it would. The useless, dangerous traffic jam was gone, and Hilldale owned its own streets again. The people who had been inconvenienced for a short time were all in fine shape. Business was good. Property values were up. Even Grandma had to admit there's about as much satisfaction in planting a new tree as there is in admiring an old one, maybe a little more. And above all, Hilldale itself had become a part of progress, had taken its rightful place with all the other active, forward-looking communities that have always made our country great.